This video, just like many other videos, are about applied music theory. The topic shouldn't be scary, it's really simple, and that's why I prepared for you a free mini music theory course. It's completely free, and it's very easy to follow, and it's basically the key that is gonna unlock all the other videos on this channel. Check it out, guitarinfusion.com. But for now, let's get into this video. Hi, my name is David Wallerman. Welcome to this channel. And today we are going to talk about things you can practice on your guitar while traveling. And what better guitar to talk about practice things when you're traveling than a travel guitar. This is an any gig guitar. It's pretty cool. I'll tell you all about it in this video. But for now, let's get into tip number one. The first thing you can do on the go with your guitar and only your guitar, no backing tracks, no bands, nothing, just no, no amps, just your guitar is analyzing chord shapes. Now I'm not talking about chord shapes that you have learned before. You know, all those chords that you, you learn. No, I'm talking about new chord shapes. So the idea here is to place your fingers on the instrument, anywhere on the instrument and the results might be, Pretty. It might be a little, little unpretty. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But the idea is to place your fingers here and then ask yourself, how many notes am I playing? Well, in this case, one, two, three, four, and pick one of these notes to be considered the reference note, the root. So we'll pick the lowest note that I have here. This chord shape that I'm playing here from the fourth string to the first is frets uh, seven, uh, eight, nine, ten. So my fourth string, seventh fret is my root. And I'm just gonna ask myself, all right, if this were to be a chord, what makes that chord? And that's where you go into your interval. So the first interval that we have here, that's a diminished fifth. So we've got a root, a diminished fifth. Then what is that? That's a major seventh, okay, major seventh. And then what is this? That's a fourth. So we have a chord that is made of a root, um, diminished fifth, a major seventh, and a fourth. Cool. What do you do with that? Well, a lot of different things. You can match scales that have the same construction, or you can just strengthen, which is really the object of this exercise, strengthen your knowledge of intervals, which is, as you know, if you've been watching this channel, so important. But that's the first thing that I would recommend you do if you just have a guitar and you have a few minutes of practice on the go. The second thing you can do while on the go, and that's kind of a continuation of the first tip that I gave you, is uh, what I would call melodic surroundings. The idea here is to play a chord, and this could be any chord. Again, it could be something that you know, something that you just learned, or something that you just made up on the spot. It doesn't matter. But the idea is to play that chord. So I'm gonna pick this one. Very pretty chord, I think. I really like that chord. Really quick, the fingering, I'm using uh, strings five, four, three, two, frets um, six, nine, six, and seven. That chord. You don't even need to know what that chord is. That doesn't matter, although it helps, but the idea is to play the chord, listen to it, and make melodic ideas around that in the same zone of the fretboard. This is very caged orientated, right? So um, you can, of course, use the notes of the chord, but you can surround that and try, you know, try notes that are kind of around that. If you feel that that note doesn't fit, try the, the, another one. 
That is close. You're just exploring here. What happens if I go one fret high? I don't like it, so I'm gonna avoid that. And what about this one? I don't like it either. I like that. And you're just exploring around the fretboard and eventually you'll be able to, to play the chord and create something kind of new that is not lick based. That really, really helps that connection between your mind and your fingers. Super useful thing to do when you're practicing on the go. The third thing you can do while practicing on the go is an exercise that I, that I call plan, preview, play, the three Ps. So you, you, here's how it works. It, it's, it's kind of a stupid exercise, but the benefits are huge. They really have helped me in my um, development as a musician, and they still do. You've got to start with a note, any note, it doesn't matter. So we'll start with this one right here on the fourth string, seventh fret, okay? That's your reference note. From there, you're gonna do the planning phase. So the planned phase is to look at another note, not the one that you're playing here, another one. So my eyes are gonna lock into another one. It really doesn't matter. So I'm gonna lock into this one right here. Um, I am playing the fourth string, seventh fret, but the planning phase is on the third string, ninth fret, okay? Kind of in that zone. So I did the planned phase. The preview is you're gonna sing that note. So at first you might just randomly sing something, but eventually you'll be able to really pinpoint that. So, so, and I'm, I'm looking at this one. I think it's gonna, it's gonna sound like, I think so, we'll see. And then there's the play phase where you check. Yes, I got it. If you get it wrong, if you're looking at this in the, pre, the, the preview and you're singing, you adjust, okay? And then you do the same. This is your new note. I'm gonna, that's the, you, um, the you, you're playing that note and then I'm gonna preview, I'm gonna plan on this one, which is on the third string, seventh fret. Preview, play, yes. So you're basically singing, the, anticipating the sound of the note that you're going to play. Something magical happens when you do this five minutes a day for a month. Your, your phrasing is gonna be so much closer to what's inside because soon the, the, playing, the, the playing is kind of reversed. Instead of your fingers doing the playing, you're taking control over the fingers and your mental is guiding what your fingers should be playing. So that's my tip um, when you're on the go to practice things. Let's move on to the fourth thing you can practice on the go. Fourth thing you can do practicing on the go is what I call strengthening the thread. So what is that thread? That thread is the, the cable that links the source of the musical idea and the outcome. The source of the musical idea is up here or in your heart, your soul, wherever. I'm not sure exactly in the body where it comes from, but let's say it's here, okay? You've got the musical thought. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -bum. We need to transfer this to the outcome, the fingers in this case. We do this when we speak all the time. When I'm talking to you here, I'm thinking about it and then I'm delivering it. But the thread is, is so efficient, so well built, that it seems instantaneous, instantaneous when I'm thinking and, and talking, but it's not. It's just really fast. When you pick up an instrument for the first time, you realize how slow that thread is first when you're first learning a new language, the music language. But we can strengthen that so that you have the idea and you, your output is, is really, really fast. And that helps in many, many ways. In jams and improvs and composition, all that. So how do we strengthen that, for that thread? We strengthen it this way. We take every step one by one. So we're going to start with the, the source. Ba -da -ba. That's my idea. Da -da -da. Okay, simple. One, two, three, three notes. Ba -da -ba. What happens between the source and the outcome? Well, your brain does a whole lot of different things. We're gonna break those down. It's analyzing the rhythm, 
da da da. It's kind of equal value of notes. Ba da ba. Um, the the line, the movement, ba da is a little bit higher. Bum. It kind of goes up. Ba da ba. And then it also thinks, how do I do that on my instrument? Well, I I think I need to go higher like this, like towards the the right side from my perspective. All those things are very, very fast, but we're breaking them down. That's the second step. And then the third step is applying it. So, ba da ba. You might need to search a little bit. Ba. Ba da ba. Ba da ba. Ba da ba. Okay, that's it. That's what I have. Ba da ba. Now, on the guitar, you can play the same note, same pitch on different strings, different frets. So, we're going to try that. Ba da ba. Maybe there's another way. Yeah, that. Try to find as many ways as possible to replicate what the source told you to do. And what happens is that when you validate that idea on the instrument, when you're able to, to play it, you, um, there's something that we're not aware of that happens. Your brain gets the feedback of what you're playing and it matches what the source was. It, it closes the loop in a way. And the more you do that, the more those connections are made and the more you can be like, da -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. you have a very clear picture of how to do that. Okay, it was a little faster and it will get faster and faster. Five minutes a day will really do wonders. So that's my fourth tip to practice on the go. The fifth tip is something that a lot of quote unquote lead players, I say quote unquote because I think a player is a player. Um, if you're only thinking of yourself as a lead player or only as a rhythm player, you might be missing out on other things. Everything is blended together. And that's the point of this exercise. A lot of lead players, um, again, quote unquote, <laughs> think in terms of uh, notes, modes, pitches, all that's important, Harmo harmony and all that. but um, rhythm really does have an impact on the delivery of the idea. If I play something like this, I could play it uh, the same exact notes with this kind of rhythm. It gives you a different feeling than Right? Different. So that's what we're going to work on. We're going to start with a very simple phrase. Let's do something in A minor pentatonic. It really doesn't matter. A few notes. Um, maybe we'll do something like this. Something like that, okay? Try to play this, these same exact notes. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven notes. And as many ways as you can just by changing the rhythm. doing it ad lib right now, no metronomes, right, just to get used to those different sounds. <laughs> A lot of different ways and that really will trigger some new thoughts, new ideas. So that's my fifth tip. If you have five minutes, you're on the go, you got your travel guitar or, or whatever instrument you have, do that five minutes, it's really going to be beneficial. All right, so as promised, let's talk about this a little bit. What is this? Well, this is a travel guitar, obviously. And before I, I tell you more about it, I wanna stress that this is very different from this. Don't expect to play the way that you would play on this on your travel guitar. They have different purposes. This should never replace your main instrument, I think. With that out of the way, this is a good choice for a travel guitar. With a travel guitar, you want something that is portable, that will play well. You don't want something that will completely change the way that you, you, uh, you fret or the way that you phrase. This is uh, this basically the, the neck, the same neck as you would get on a traditional guitar. The size is normal size. It's not you know shrunk down or anything, which you don't want a shrunk down instrument. It's going to mess up your pretty much everything. It stays in tune. It's very light. The neck is maple. 
believe it or not, it's painted right now, but it's a maple neck, maple body. It's got one humbucker. You can plug it in or obviously play unplugged. The tuning pegs are out of your way. You can put a strap on it. You can also, they, it comes with an attachment so that you can have um, an armrest here. If you feel that when you're playing here, you need something here, it comes with an attachment if you want. It's very affordable. Check it out. I'll leave the link below. But again, don't, uh, don't buy this to be your only guitar. This is a travel guitar. If you're buying this, you're just starting out and I'm getting emails. Uh, this is not, uh, I'm not able to do everything I would do on my main guitar. Well, no, that's not the point. But this is a very good option. This is any gig. I recommend it. It's cool. I'll leave the link below. And uh, I hope you enjoyed these tips. If you want more, more videos like this one, if you enjoyed this one, you should subscribe. Every week, three lessons come out. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And uh, all these are meant to help guitar players find their unique voice on the instrument, develop it to tell their own personal musical story. That's what it's all about. Thank you so much. Check it out. Any gig guitar, portable. See you very soon. Practice well.